What's up guys, Chris Brown from Train Boston coming at you with another wellness moment. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about recovery and maintenance of our bodies. Now in the last few weeks we've talked about a lot of stuff to do with exercise, nutrition, sleep, and proper uh, hydration, etc. But we haven't talked about what we can do indirectly to help us recover. The big thing I like to come to is breathing. Now you may know about breathing and how it works within exercise as a recovery tool. You may have heard things like hold your hands over your head or take deep breaths. Uh, sometimes you may even hear breathing through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, and those are all very important things. However, what we're gonna get into today is how hormones work and how breathing can help us uh, regulate our bodies in ways that we wouldn't be able to do normally. Now, what do I mean by wouldn't be able to do normally? Well, you can think of something like meditation and Buddhist monks. They are known to be able to do a lot of things that normal people cannot do with their bodies. They can withstand very cold temperatures for longer than average time. They can withstand pain uh, for, that normal people would faint from and many other things like that. Now, how do they do that? It seems impossible. Well, one thing they do is they meditate a lot. And what we're gonna take from our meditation is breathing. Now, breathing is important in almost every aspect of meditation out there. And I don't expect anyone to become a master in uh, this next few minutes here. But what I want you to do is learn how breathing can help us get better at what we're already doing. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to take the time to explain how it works. We have within our nervous system both a sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. One of those means active or fight or flight, that's your sympathetic, and one means uh, rest and digest. Our parasympathetic nervous system is monitored by things called mechanoreceptors. They measure pressure, they measure stress in our body. They're not something that we're actively paying attention to. So generally we don't have control over those functions, things like breathing, things like your heartbeat, things you generally don't want to be responsible for doing. The sympathetic nervous system is more like we're getting amped up, we're getting ready to do something strenuous, whether it's stressful in a mentally stressful way or whether it's stressful in a physically rigorous way. Uh, when we turn on our sympathetic nervous system, we increase our blood flow, our vasodilation, our heart rate goes up, breathing will get more, um, breathing rate will go up. Things will become more intense. It generally makes sense. We're ready to use our muscles, okay? So when we're constantly having that ebb and flow of these two systems, we're in a good homeostatic um, balance. We want both of these things to come up and down throughout the day in a rhythm. The problem being a lot of us are chronically stressed out. In some cases that can be from exercise and overtraining. Maybe we're working out too hard. Maybe we're not fueling our bodies properly and we don't have enough muscle glycogen and we're working out beyond that point to the point where cortisol levels go really high or our stress levels go really high. I'll get into cortisol in just a minute. Um, but generally speaking, a lot of us are stressed out because of non-physical factors. Maybe we have a deadline to meet at work. Maybe we're having a bad relationship with our husband, our wife, or our spouse. Um, maybe we've been worried about something and can't sleep because of it. Uh, those are still stress responses in the body. And that means our sympathetic nervous system is always on. Now again, sympathetic is not, uh, is not bad and parasympathetic is not necessarily just good. We want that balance between the two. But what do we do when we fall out of that rhythm? Well, before we get into that, let's get into uh, the stress hormone cortisol. You guys have probably heard of cortisol and you probably just think it's bad. Well, I got news for you, it's not just bad. We need cortisol. Uh, cortisol does a lot of good things. I like to think of cortisol as something that breaks things down. Now. Breaking things down can be good for anti-inflammation. Um, breaking things down can be good for when we need to utilize energy. So we need to break down uh, and process or metabolize our protein, fat, and carbohydrate in order to do things in our body. 
That's a good thing. We need that. Cortisol has also been shown that when we're sleeping, we use it for memory consolidation, which can be also very important. That's why when we wake up, we tend to have a little bit higher levels of blood serum cortisol. Uh, and then about an hour or so after that, our, our uh, levels drop down a little bit. Uh, by mid-afternoon, they get a little lower. And then by nighttime, they're back down at their lowest point. Generally, it should be under, I think it's five micrograms per deciliter at night. In the morning, it will be 10 to 20. Um, that's on average blood serum cortisol levels, micrograms per deciliter and then it will slowly get lower throughout the day. That's a normal uh, diurnal rhythm, okay? That's just your rhythm of cortisol levels throughout the day. That's also regulated through adrenaline, which is another hormone. Um, comes from the same area in the body. I don't wanna get too far into that, but um, your body does a good job of regulating these things if you treat it right. If we are not treating our bodies properly, however, which we often do, uh, we will have elevated cortisol levels throughout the entire day. Which again, cortisol is not bad by itself, but if the levels never come down, a lot of things don't work properly. Um, cortisol is a big thing with digestion, as I said before, with metabolizing protein, fat, carbohydrates. Yeah, it works directly with other hormones such as insulin. Um, I won't get too deep into that. But if those things aren't f functioning properly, all of a sudden our body doesn't know how to bring levels down. It doesn't know how to uh, react um, to other factors in the body. And we can have issues. Those issues are, can be anxiety and depression. We said cortisol is important during sleep. Uh, it can be associated with increased risk of heart disease. It can obviously have issues with your gastrointestinal system, it can, which can also lead to weight gain. Um, sometimes people can't get the weight off and uh, some of that may be linked to, to higher cortisol levels and another thing is recovery in general yes it, it can affect your sleep in a negative way but it can affect your performance as well which a lot of us care about um, or it's a, a very big factor for a lot of us so what do we do aside from eating healthy and trying to sleep better and and exercising well one thing we can do that's really quick and easy is work on our breathing now, breathing, as I said earlier, has been shown to do a lot of great things, and you don't need to be a Buddhist master uh, to be good at breathing. All we need to do is do a little bit, um, and studies have shown that a little bit every day of mindful breathing can really help uh, with all the issues I was saying before. We just want to get a little bit of control over our uh, cortisol and over our nervous system in an indirect way. So what I'm gonna do with you today is I'm gonna work on a five second breathing technique. Some of you may have done with me before. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take five deep breaths. We're gonna take five seconds to breathe in through our nose, five seconds to breathe out through our mouth. And then we're gonna hold our breath for five seconds before breathing in. And again, we're gonna do that for five times. That's all we're gonna do. I don't care if you have a thought in your head. I don't care if you are off a little bit. All I care about is that you're focusing on your breathing. Okay, so let's do that together here. I'm gonna hold my fingers up doing this as we breathe in and out, and I'll do this when I want you to hold your breath. You can do it for more than five times, uh, or you can do it for less, but just try it out. So here we go. Breathing in to start through the nose. The tongue is at the roof of your mouth to block the airway. All right.
And that's it, guys. You do that once a day for five days a week for a month, and it's been shown to have a lot of beneficial things for your body. I got links down below if you want to read more up on that. Uh, it's a little bit sciencey, a little bit of heady, but there's a lot of good information in there on both breathing and cortisol. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, please post them below. Like and su subscribe to the video if you like what you're hearing, guys. Um, but otherwise, let me know how it goes. Did you like it? Did you have trouble with it? Was it easy? Would you, are you looking for something more complicated? Uh, do you already do this in your classes for fitness? Do you do it in your yoga? Do you do it in your Pilates? Uh, do you do it on your own? Regardless, thank you once again for joining me on my wellness journey, and we'll see you next time.